If you've been following along in our Art Listen videos recently, we've been doing a series called Back to Art Basics, which covers the seven basic elements of art. We covered color, we talked a little bit about value, our most recent video was about texture, and today we're going to talk about three separate elements of art that kind of go together, and they are line, shape, and form. Each of these pictures is a self-portrait by a well-known artist. Although they are portraying very similar things, one main idea that differentiates them is how the artists have used line in their work. Line is the path created when an object moves from one point to another. In the visual arts, lines are made when you draw or paint marks on a paper or canvas, or when materials such as wood, glass, and metal are bent or shaped. Lines are also made by photographers and filmmakers when they choose how to angle their cameras and how to compose their shots. Lines can be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, straight, curved, or free form. They can be thick or thin, light or dark. Sometimes one line can be all of those things. Lines can be described in many ways. Dashed, dotted, rough, smooth, zigzag, implied. What qualities do you see in these lines? How would you describe them? Every artist has a unique way of making lines. It's one way of expressing their individual style. This is a self-portrait by Jean-Michel Basquiat. His lines might be described as bold, jagged, almost messy at times. What do these lines make you think of? Why might he have chosen to represent himself in this way? Compare that to the faint, seemingly unfinished quality of this self-portrait by David Hockney. What do his lines suggest to you? Do they make you think? or feel differently than the Basquiat self-portrait? If you were drawing a self-portrait, what kinds of lines would you choose to represent yourself? What kinds of lines would communicate the messages you want viewers to think about? The next time you are looking at a sculpture, painting, or drawing, try to notice what kinds of lines are used and interpret what they mean to you. Fruit has played a prominent role in the history of art. It's long been a favorite subject for artists making still life paintings and drawings. Looking at still lifes of fruit is a useful way of studying how artists approach making shapes. When the beginning of a line connects with its own end or intersects with another, a shape is formed. In visual art, Shapes are flat and are defined by their length and width. In other words, they're two-dimensional. There is an infinite number of shapes, but all fall into one of two categories, geometric or organic. Geometric shapes are commonly recognized such as squares, hexagons, rectangles, and circles. Organic shapes are freeform and often one of a kind. Artists learn how to see the world around them as basic shapes. Simplifying objects into geometric and organic shapes makes drawing them easier. Shapes inherit the qualities of the lines that were used to construct them. For instance, this painting by Cezanne has heavy, solid outlines that define the shapes, whereas the fruit in this ink drawing by Manola Rocky is made up of very soft, fuzzy lines. Each approach to making lines produces different feelings and associations in the viewers. 
Some artists make oranges that are perfectly round, while others draw or paint every little bump and detail of the skin. The next time you're looking at a painting or drawing, try to notice how the artist is using shape in their work. If you were making a drawing or painting, how would you interpret the objects in front of you? Would you draw them as faithfully as possible? Or would you choose to represent them more abstractly? Practice for yourself by setting up a bowl of fruit and drawing what you see. These paintings are all examples of the genre of art called trompe l'oeil. Translated from French, trompe l'oeil literally means fools the eye. It's a style of art that makes you question if what you're seeing is real. It's this illusion of depth that artists create which tricks our eyes. When shapes get this third dimension of depth, they become forms. When given form, circles become spheres, squares become cubes, triangles become cones or pyramids. Form takes up space in either a real or implied way. In paintings and drawings, for instance, form is implied because it's an illusion of three dimensions. With sculpture, on the other hand, form is real because it takes up three-dimensional space. Visual artists use light and shadow effects to create the illusion of three-dimensional form. A strong sense of form can also be created by increasing contrast between highlights and shadow areas. Street artist Banksy uses this technique a lot. Notice how these human forms are made up of only white, black, and one shade of gray. Sometimes form can even be created by an artist's use of color. Artist Akash Nihalani often juxtaposes brightly colored forms against neutral backgrounds to create the illusion of depth. Notice his forms don't incorporate any shading at all. These are just a few ways artists create forms and incorporate depth into their work. What are some other ways that artists create form? Is there a particular style or technique that draws you in and catches your eye? Mastering many different approaches to making form will give you unlimited options when creating your own artwork and will enable you to fool viewers' eyes in any way you choose. One of the things I like to do the most in summertime is to come down to the farm ice cream stand down here get myself some ice cream. So I thought we'd make an ice cream project today that utilizes line, shape, and form. Let's take a look at the directions. We'll be making a three-dimensional ice cream cone design that incorporates all three of the elements of art we've been talking about. The ice cream cone itself will be the form, and the background will feature both lines and shapes. Here's the supplies you're gonna need for this project. You'll need some brown construction paper. If you don't have brown, any other color will do. You'll need some white poster board, or some thick artboard paper, or some foam core. You'll need some tissue paper, either colored or white. You'll need a pencil, a ruler, some heavy duty tape, like duct tape or gorilla tape or packing tape. Then you'll need some markers or paint or colored pencils or pastels. You don't have to have all of those things. You just need to have something to color with. Then you'll need some scissors and you'll need a stapler and glue, which is optional. All right, we're gonna make our cone now. And to make our cone, we need a piece of brown construction paper, and we need a ruler, and we need a pencil. And what we're gonna do is we're going to um, make the curve that is gonna make up the cone. So we start by making a two-dimensional flat shape before we make the form of the cone. So let's take our ruler and we measure how long the side of the paper is, and this paper is 12 inches, okay? So the longer part is obviously more than 12 inches, but we only want 
a 12 by 12 space to work with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure down here, we're going to measure 12 inches and mark it with our pencil. So here's 12 right here. So we have 12 inches going this way and then 12 inches going that way. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to make a curved line that connects this 12 inch with this corner up here, the 12 on this side. All right, so let's do that. Hey, I've drawn that curved line that connects the top corner with the 12 inch on the bottom. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a pastel. You can take uh, markers or crayons or colored pencils. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make lines coming up from this corner now that will make the design of the waffle cone. If you've ever seen a, an ice cream waffle cone, it has kind of like a crisscross pattern to it. So I'm gonna start by making a bunch of lines that go out this way over the curve, and then I'm gonna make lines that go this way to be the crisscross of the pattern of a waffle cone. Hey, I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah, I've drawn my diagonal lines, and now I'm gonna draw the curved lines going in the opposite direction. Okay, and here's the completed uh, ice cream waffle cone pattern. And now what we can do is we can cut this out along that original pencil line. Yeah, and this is what we have after we cut that out. Okay, now you're gonna take your fan shape with your design that you just did on it, and you're going to roll it into the shape of a cone, and then take a stapler and staple the back on the seam there, or if you have some tape, you can tape it. You have a little bit of extra hanging out at the edge there. You can take some scissors and trim that off. Okay, and now it's more even around the top of the cone. Now, what we need to do is we need to make some scoops of ice cream that will go into our cone here. So we'll have some colored tissue paper here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll them into a ball to make them look like a scoop of ice cream. So let's do that. Okay. Into a ball shape. There's our orange ice cream. Here's our yellow. Yellow ice cream scoop that and now we can put them into our cone. Let's take a look at how we do that. We have our orange ice cream scoop in here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take kind of the edge of the tissue paper and we're gonna staple it on the side where we have the seam. All right, we're not gonna see this side. This is gonna be against the, the background paper. So we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna staple this to the back of the cone where we don't see it. Okay, put a couple of staples in there so it hangs on. And then we'll get our other flavor and do the same thing with the yellow. Make a couple of staples for the yellow. Okay, here it is from the front. And if you want, you could also add maybe a staple to the front just to keep it a little more secure. But the idea is to make it look kind of like bunched up, like a, two scoops of ice cream put together. And we have our ice cream cone complete. And if you want, you can also add some if you have some white tissue paper that you want to make some designs on, you could add that too. Let's take a look at how we do that. Here's our white tissue paper. And if you want to make some designs like maybe sprinkles or chocolate chips or something that would be um, in your ice cream flavor, you can do that. We'll make some sprinkles on this sheet of white paper and then we'll see what it looks like as a scoop of ice cream in our ice cream cone. And I covered this white sheet with um, some designs that look like sprinkles. Let's uh, ball that up like we did the other pieces of tissue paper and see what it looks like as a scoop of ice cream with sprinkles. Here's what this looks like and let's see if we can add it to our cone with our other flavors up there. Again, we staple it to the back just like the other two. And then we could kind of arrange them from the front side. If we need to staple it from the front, we'll staple it from the front as well. But you can see what that looks like when we have um, a white tissue paper with some designs on it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a background design. The background design is what goes behind our ice cream cone and it's gonna be a cool design made up of lines and shapes. And you will start by getting a either a very thick piece of paper or a piece of uh, oak tag board or some kind of art poster board. 
This happens to be uh, what's called foam core. It's really kind of a thick poster board. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna add some designs using any kind of color medium you want. And you want your designs to be a combination of lines and shapes. So we have line and shape, and then the cone itself is gonna be the form. So all three elements of art work together. Okay, so first you're gonna get um, your board. You're gonna decide, do you wanna use paints? Do you wanna use any of the drawing materials? I'm gonna actually draw it out first in permanent marker, and then I'm gonna add color to it after I'm done drawing it out. So let's do that. Okay, I'm done drawing my design. I did kind of a O to the 1980s here with some of my lines down here at the bottom and my shapes up here at the top. It's kind of funky, um, retro looking 80s design. So now I'm going to color it in. I'm gonna use um, paint for this particular project, but you can use any kind of other color medium that you would like to. Okay, now our background design is done and I actually switched to markers instead of the paint just because the markers uh, looked a lot more solid and vibrant on the poster board than the paint did. But as you can see, I have my stripes down here at the bottom and I have up here um, colored in my shapes either uh, with solid color or with um, lines, kind of squiggly lines in the background if you can see. So now we're going to take our poster board, we're going to combine it with our ice cream cone for our finished project. Okay, so I think with the ice cream cone, I think I will angle it sort of like this or maybe like this so that we can get to see both the cone and the background design. But you don't have to do it that way. You can put it straight up like this. Um, your background design, of course, doesn't have to look anything like the one I did. You can make it completely your own, do whatever kind of design you want. Um, just the idea is to use lines and different shape combinations for your background. And then your ice cream cone is the form that makes up the line shape and form of the project. So let's take a look at how we attach the ice cream cone to the board. All right, you're gonna turn over your ice cream cone so you have that seam running in the back and you're gonna take some heavy duty tape if you have some duct tape or some Gorilla tape or just any kind of heavy duty kind of tape and make little rolls like this and put them along the seam on the back side of the cone. We don't wanna see the tape, of course, so we're putting it in the back here. And then once you have it attached, we'll flip it over and we'll decide where it goes on our uh, background board and press it on. All right, so here's our completed line shape and form ice cream project. You can also use some glue to glue the cone on if you have strong enough glue that'll hold it. You wanna leave it there to dry overnight. But the uh, tape seems to be holding my cone on pretty fine as it is. Um, and once again, it doesn't have to look anything like this. You can make the background look completely different, come up with a totally different background design. Different uh, colors, of course, on everything, different types of ice cream. You could use multiple ice cream cones if you wanna make sm two, multiple smaller ice cream cones. It's completely up to you how you want this project to look. But I hope you enjoy working on it and I hope you get a nice piece of very summery artwork to put up at your house as we approach the summertime. Thanks for joining me today for another art lesson video. I hope you guys get to go outside and enjoy some of this nice, almost summer weather we're having. So until next time, I hope you have a great time doing your artwork and share with me the results on our classroom page. And I'll see you again next time. Bye. Hey guys, look what came in the mail today. It's the yearbook for 2020. If you already ordered a yearbook, the office will be sending you some information about where and when you can pick them up. If you would like to order a copy, we do have some extra copies available, but supplies are limited. So contact the school office if you would like to buy your own copy of the 2020 yearbook. Hi, I'm Bob Ross. I'm so glad you could join me today as I go on my adventures around the playground. Won't you join me?
look, it's my little friend, Mr. Raccoon. I love Mr. Raccoon. He's one of God's creatures, you know. Isn't he a cute furry little devil? There he goes. He's going to scamper away now. Bye, Mr. Raccoon. I'd like to thank you very, very much for joining me today, friends. I hope you can join me another time. Until then, God bless my friends. <laughs>